Bang! It's time for a hi hat. <laughs> Woo! Oh, it's still recording. <laughs> Funny. Well. Hi everyone, it's Anfa from AnfaMusic.com and in today's episode of LZW I'm gonna show you how to make synthesized, synthesized hi-hat sounds. Actually, it's gonna be a few of hi-hat sounds because there are many different ways to do it and I'm actually using all of them. Well, maybe you know some more. Hopefully this will get you started and give you some idea of how to make nice hi-hats, how to interpret it all your own way, how to experiment, well, whatever. So let's just start off by not making music, but drawing. Yep. So if you don't know what a hi-hat looks like, I'm gonna quickly draw you. It's a very special kind of a hat which actually is two hats put together in a very special way. Uh, of course, it's going to be simplified. And it's for some reason I'm drawing it on with some strange angle. Never mind. Yeah, I'm going to draw the pedal. Yeah, this is it. This is hi-hat. Hi-hat is made out of two hats. One is on the top and the other is on the bottom. So we have one and say two. Um, they are different because the first is actually it can move up or down along with the pedal. When you release the pedal the hat goes up, when you press it, it goes down. And the second one is static. It's not moving at all. It's just there. Whatever you do, it's gonna be there. So this gives uh, the drummer very much freedom of how to make the sounds and what sounds can make. Because when these are open or half open, the hi-hat can produce long sounds like a ride cymbal or crash. Of course, it's it has different sound because the hats are smaller, so it's generally higher in pitch. But when they are closed, uh, it can create sharp, short sounds that are great for creating groove and you know uh, very nice rhythmic patterns. And the tighter you press the pedal, the shorter the notes. And this is a phenomenon that we're going to be replicating with our hi-hat patches with Zenit SubFX because it's possible. Yeah, but it's gonna be on the very end because first we need the basic sound and then we can play around. So let's kick it off. As you can see, here is our previous session. We have the kick and the snare and I've created just the empty patch of hi-hat, assigned it to channel 3 on the mixer and we're ready to go. So, a hi-hat sound, first, the simplest way to make it is to get a noise source and then create a short percussive envelope, like this one. I'm also going to reduce the release, enter free mode and remove the sustain so it will never, you know, just never play a tail, just a short note, and let's hear what is making, what's, what, what, what this sounds like. That's pretty quiet. I'm going to turn it up a bit. It's not very hi-hatty, uh, mainly because we have a Lopez filter. As you probably remember, Zenit SubFX by default has a Lopez filter enabled right here. And you can see it's LPF2, so it's resonant Lopez because all the twos are resonant. And it's turned down. The cutoff uh, 
center cutoff frequency is not all the way up. So I'm going to turn it all the way up and let's listen again. Now oh, that's more like it. However, it's still very harsh and hard. Maybe it's a little bit too loud or maybe it's just the frequency. Well, what I do is I usually change this to a high-pass filter, turn it down somewhere where it was and listen again. Now this is much more like a hi-hat, but still lacks something and maybe because it's uh, a little bit too long and a little bit too loud. Oh yeah, this is what I was looking for. Okay, so this is our basic patch. White noise with amplitude envelope, short with no sustain, and a high-pass filter. Okay, I'm going to duplicate this. And basing on this one, I'm going to create another. It's going to be high at 2. And it's going to use the same ch mixer channel. We're not going to make ourselves too much stuff. You can always rewire it. Now I'm going to change this one to a different type of filter because ZenitsubFX has analog, format, and state variable filters implemented. The state variable filters are a little bit different. Uh, as you can see, we have much less to choose from, and the names are different because in the analog filters we have LPF1, and in the state variable filters we have 1 LPF. Well, I'm not sure why but it makes the difference much more visible. So I'm going to use high-pass filter. And I like the way these filter sounds, on high-head especially. It's different. I can't really tell the difference. But somehow I like it. So maybe now I'll just pan this left, or right, this left. Play them both. Maybe offset one, so we can... Kind of compare them? I don't know. I just like it. Okay, let's make another hi hat sound. I'm going to duplicate this. No, I'm gonna make something from scratch. So, um, wait, hey, wait a second. All right, so actually, I rooted the hi hat 2 to a separate mixer channel and I created hi hat 3, which is now empty and it has also uh, its separate. Mixer channel. Let's open the interface. And now I'm going to use, use subsynth. Why? Because um, the noise source in that synth is mono. We have everything exactly the same in the left and right channel. Of course, we can override this by creating do voices with noise and panning them left and right. But it's a little bit daunting. Plus, we're going to do it anyway. But for now, let's go with Subsynth. As you might remember, Subsynth is a noise synthesizer. It's a sub, uh, substrative synthesis, which means it generates noise and then it subtracts everything that's not musical frequencies. And this way it sculpts out musical sounds out of noise. So, how to do a sound of hi-hat? gonna mute, not mute, but uh, solo this. Let's just do it. First I'm going to change the percussiveness, turn up the loudness, enter free mode, remove the sustain, shorten the tail, I mean the release, and now I'm going to pitch shift it up. And increase the bandwidth. This is nice. What's even nicer is that we can um, sculpt the sound and add some color to it by adding different harmonics, which actually adds different bands of noise to the overall thing. And we can change the relative bandwidth.
can make something tonish, more like a tone, and more like white noise. Yeah, this is pretty nice. I'm going to enable filter, which is disabled by default. And as you can see, it's by default Lopez filter resident and cutoff somewhere low. So I'm going to change to state variable filters and use one hypers filter. Play a bit with the Q. Yep, and change the start value to max. So we have a click, plus I'm going to turn it up. This is another hi-hat, another way of making a hi-hat. Now I've created another hi-hat instrument, hi-hat 4, because there are more ways to make hi-hat sounds. And we're gonna just dive into it. I'm gonna be using frequency modulation this time. And if you haven't heard about frequency modulation yet, I'm going to quickly draw you what it is. Let's say we have a signal, a sine wave. It's pretty. And we have, this is the basic signal. And we have another signal that is modulating the previous one. Maybe not. Maybe something different. Maybe this. A saw wave. Woo! I didn't know I can do that. Hey, this way I can correct this hi-hat. Make it actually upright. Cool! Dude, this is amazing. Have you ever seen a problem where you can rotate the canvas? Wow. I'm impressed. Okay, so we have two signals. The sine wave and the uh, saw wave. Did I say square wave before? No, it's a sine. It's a saw wave. Sawtooth wave. Sorry. Crap. <laughs> I keep doing that. So, this saw wave determines the changes of the pitch of the oscillator. So the actual output would be something like this, I guess, or maybe. Something more like this. You get the idea. The frequency increases. And when the saw wave goes back to zero, our perfect and... Oh my, I can zoom this. Wow. Our perfect sine wave gets reset. I mean, its frequency gets back to what? It should be. Hmm. Where's the tool? Okay, where's the tool? Yeah, please. Ah, I just didn't disable this. So we have another time our sine wave is just this lazy and then it gets faster and faster and denser. Something like this. So this creates a lot of harmonic content. Very interesting. Maybe I'll just, you know, leave this at the hi-hat. It looks much better because it's colorful and stuff. Never mind. So how do you do frequency modulation with Zenith Sub FX? Well, it's easy. Let's open the new instrument, add synth, show voice parameters. Yes, here's our, here is our first voice. We have our sine wave. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing. Turn on the modulator in the frequency modulation mode or type. And we have another sine wave. Well, let's change it to saw wave. So it's gonna be what we drew earlier in the my paint and well let's listen to it that's neat that's actually interesting but how can we make this actually the hi hat well if we overdo this let's me let me press play and show you when i decrease the effect, we get sine wave and slowly increasing. Let's listen.
Neat! Don't you think that this could be a nice thing to feed our hi-hats out? It lacks just one thing, stereo image. But it's easy to do because we have a unison option down here. What does the unison do? Well, it multiplies uh, the oscillators and all this stuff and detunes them slightly and processes them uh, separately, then mixes them back. So, let's listen. Okay, now let's add the envelope, the percussive envelope. Here. And of course, enter free mode and remove the sustain and shorten the release. So we have no extra noise. Now we of course have the low pass filter. I'm going to change it to state variable filter and of course change it to high pass. And here's our frequency modulation hi-hat, man. Listen. It's beautiful. Great. So here is fourth hi-hat. So now um, we have to go back to what we can do with the hi-hat pedal. Actually shortening the notes, making them shorter and longer. And what we can do more with this patch. Well, let's, I don't know, <laughs> maybe clear the notes for now. Oh, wait a second, I will just clean the mess here. Okay, I have a pattern, please listen. And without the kick and snare. Yeah. So now let's just play around, for example, with hi hat free. Um, and see what we can do with the piano neural, with the notes. If I shift the note down, it gets longer. So it's like I release the high hat pedal, having a looser note, or even if I open it completely. So with this, I can even make crash-like sounds. So this is very powerful. Now we can also control and uh, drag, select and control up arrow, or down arrow to shift by octaves. So it's an easy way. So of course, shifting it up will also make the notes shorter. And making them louder will make them brighter because of the filter Velocity sensing. So it's interesting because we have actually make a lot of different, very different sounds from one high hat patch.
Maybe let's add something crushy here. Ah, oh, it's so nice and crispy. Woo! Completely computer-like, but it's super. Oh man, this is nice. Alright, so I think this is all I have for today. Sometime later we could um, further mix these hi-hats and some reverb and such, but it's not essential. These patches will do and, you know, mixing is a different thing. So, here we have it. Thanks for uh, watching. See you next time and next week or maybe earlier because this episode was a little bit late. And wait a second, what I'm going to do next week? Uh, let me just see. Um, uh, this was hi hat, yeah. So hi hat is off. Symbols. Oh, that was that was gonna be cool. Yeah. So next time, symbols, ride, crash, and stuff. Yep. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time. Bye.